Adventures in Murfreesboro is produced in cooperation with Murfreesboro City Schools. How are you today? Oh, hey, John. I'm fine. Really? You don't sound fine. Hey, I'm just kind of bored. Bored? How could you possibly be bored on such a beautiful day? Oh, uh, I don't know. I just am. Why don't you tell me more about it? It's just that I, that I always go to the same place and do the same thing with the same people. Murph, I'm surprised to hear you talk like that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should just move to a big city. You know, Murph, sometimes when we're bored, it's not the people or the places outside of us that make us feel that way. What do you mean? I mean that sometimes we just get bored with ourselves. Really? I didn't know you could get bored with yourself. What should I do? Oh, Murph, there's lots of things to do. Like what? Well, for starters, you could maybe look around and see if there's anything you can do to help somebody else. Oh, you mean like volunteer? That's right, Murph. Now, have you ever heard the saying, charity begins at home? Uh, I'm not sure. What's that mean? That means that it's great to help out in the community, but it's also important to help your friends and family at home. Sometimes that's even harder. Uh, do you mean like do the dishes and sweep the floor and mow the lawn, stuff like that? Sure. Or you could play with your little brothers and sisters. There are lots of things you can do. But that doesn't sound like fun. Yes, but... If you help out around the house, then your whole family will have more time to spend together. And by playing with your brothers and sisters, you might have more fun than you think. <laughs> do you have brothers and sisters? Ha ha, Murph. Yes, I do. <laughs> but Murph, just look around. There's always lots of things going on in the burrow. Yeah, like what? Well, oh, there's the bell. I'll have to tell you later, Murph. Uh, By the way, who's our guest today? My guest today. <laughs> Let me get down here. Okay, okay. Oh, oh, it's Justin Holder. Uh, Justin Holder? I think I know that name. Oh, Justin, I think, I think I know his wife. Oh, Miss Rachel. Oh, Justin. Hi, Rachel, Justin, you must be, be uh, Justin. Be I'm John, too. and this is Murph, the star of the show. Hey, John. Hey, Murph. Good uh, to see you again. Oh, 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 I was thinking it might be you, Mr. Justin. It's me. It's me, buddy. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. Oh, i got to ask you a question. Okay, all right. Let's go. How is Miss Rachel? Oh, she is great. She is great. She is having fun. She's raising our two wild boys. Oh. And she is just great. And she has missed you. And you know what? what? I brought you a surprise. Oh, oh, oh. Guess what? Wait. You know, Rachel is very healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like you. Oh. And she also likes something that you like a lot. What is that? Guess what? It's, uh, it's orange. Okay. Comes oh. out of the ground. Oh, 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 oh. I, I, but I know. Is it, is it, is it carrots? Carrots. Uh, and you know what? Uh, what? The, these kind of carrots, you don't even have to work to eat. You know why? Uh, why? She fresh juiced these uh, uh, just for you this morning. Did you hear that, Can John? you believe it? Carrot juice? Yeah. Oh, oh. You, doesn't it smell good? Oh, yeah. it smells so good. You're going to have to use your straw. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 you know 
I love Miss Rachel. Yeah, she's the best, isn't she? Yeah, she. Yep. I tell you what, why don't you put that down here, and I'll have Cut. it for my snack. Okay, now you enjoy it. Now oh. use your straw, because you want to get that all over your pretty face. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, first I want to tell the kids what you do, but I thought we'd try something new. You want to try something new? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, do you like games? I love <laughs> games. Good, good, because here we go. Now. Why don't you give me three hints, and I will try to guess what you did. Um, I get people where they need to go on time. Uh, get people where they need to go. Are you a bus driver? Nope. Nope, okay. Okay, number two. Yeah. I help people with big changes in big their life. Big changes, okay. okay. And then I help people that are upsizing or downsizing. Upsizing or downsizing. Oh, okay. What do you think all those things could mean? You're a politician? No, no, that's a good <laughs> guess. That's not it. Let's see. Um, you're not a doctor. No, no, no. Um, 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 I can't guess. You tell me. I am in real estate. Real estate. I help people buy houses and sell houses and move into Murfreesboro and out of Murfreesboro. I help people move all over the country. Oh, I bet so you've met a lot of people, haven't you? I meet all kinds of people, and that's the favorite part of my job. I get to meet people from all over the world. Oh, that is pretty awesome. Okay, Mr. Justin, next question. Okay. Uh, if you could go anywhere in the world and meet anyone in the world, who would it be? That probably would have been Ansel Adams. Oh, the great photographer. That's right, that's right. And the reason I think that he just had an, an interesting outlook on life, mm -hmm. um, he was good about appreciating the natural things in life and having alone time and time with his family okay. and just being very content. You know, Mr. Justin, you, you say you like to meet a lot of people. Besides your work, what other ways do you meet people? Well, Murph, I have a, a, a big project going on right now. Really? You want to hear about it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I wanted to do something for my boys because I love photography. Uh-huh. And I love taking my camera out and meeting people and just hearing their stories. Oh. So, so you like to take pictures like Mr. Ansel Adams. That's right. And this is one of the cameras that I carry with me. You like oh, that? Oh, look yeah. at that. Yeah. See? Fancy and you schmancy. can see, look through that hole there. Oh. You see? You see, John? I do, I yeah. do. Hey, John. You see? Hi, Murph. Go so ahead. I take this camera with me every day, <laughs> and I have to meet a stranger every single day. Now, what's this got to do with your boys? Well, I wanted them to understand that everybody has a story a story. I don't know. Tell me more about it. Well, you know, we all go through different things in our lives, uh -huh. and that's kind of what makes us who we are. You understand uh -huh. that? Yeah. And so everybody, whether it's something that is great that's happened in your life, like uh -huh. like a lot of people would be interested to know that you've you've had this successful television show and oh. you know and, and how did you do that and oh. how did you become to you know how did you get involved in that a lot of people like to hear that story but mm -hmm. you know what's interesting Murph is a lot of people have things that happen in their life that they're they're not good stories oh that's sad yeah it is sad and but you know what even though it's sad <laughs> a lot of those stories are are so inspirational to other people that may be going through a tough time as well you know, yes. like I could ask you, Murph, have you ever had a, a really disappointing time in your life? Yes, I have. Yeah, what uh -huh. was that? Well, I, I don't know if it was disappointing, but it was so sad. Tell me about that. Yeah, I have, uh, I had a great grand bunny that I really, really loved. My great grand bunny, Bob. Yeah. And, and I spent all so much time, we used to go fishing and we used to garden and, and he would read me stories. Mm -hmm. But my great grand bunny, he passed on, and, and that was really sad for me. Death is a hard thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. We don't even like to say that word. I know, I yeah. know. And a lot of us don't like to talk about that. But you know what? Even though that's a tough time in our life, uh -huh. that's also a time that, that we're able to reflect and, and think about the best times and, and our best times with those people. You oh, know what I mean? Oh, yeah, and, and that helped me. 
Mommy, you know what I did? What? I got out all of our pictures that he and I made together, that we had together, and I put them all around my burrow, and I looked at them, and then and then I went out and I planted carrot seeds, yep. and I thought about him, and, and I told my mommy some special stories of things that we did, and we talked about that, and, and I felt better. Yeah, and he, and he didn't feel like he had died, did he? He no. felt like he was right there with you. Right. You know, those, those pictures take us back to that time. Oh, That's why I like having my camera, yeah. is I can take that with me and I can take some photos. Uh -huh. And when I look back at those photos, I'm immediately back in that, in that moment. You oh, know what it, I mean? Yeah, it kind of preserves memories. Absolutely it? it does. Oh yeah, yeah. and it just freezes that moment. That's right. And Murph, it's interesting about strangers. Yeah. A stranger could be that person in your class that you've just never really taking the time to talk to, uh -huh. you know? Right. Or maybe that person that has just moved here from another school. You know, it's, sometimes it's easier not to talk to strangers, you know? Sometimes it's easier to just only talk to the people that we know because that's comfortable. Right. And it's a little scary sometimes to, to you know, kind of put yourself out there and meet somebody that you've never talked to before. But it's good to talk to other kids and, and bunnies and get to know them. That's right, because you know what? They all have a story. They and all they all have, have something that they can teach you and that you can help each other with. Oh, I like that. They all have something they can teach you, you know, but they, we do have to be very careful about grown-up strangers, right? That's right. Grown-up strangers, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. That's something that you only want to do when you're with someone that's taking care of you or your parents. Right. What I'm talking about today is I would, I would tell everybody that's watching today, maybe in the Murfreesboro City Schools, right. to, to try to meet one stranger, even if it's one stranger a day or one stranger a week. Right. You know, Mr. Justin, mm -hmm. sometimes to, to kind of talk to other kids at my school. Uh, wh what can I do to help myself not be so, not be so worried? Do you know what self-talk is? Uh-uh. Self-talk self -talk is the way we talk to ourselves. The way we talk to ourselves? Have you ever heard of an affirmation? No, sir. Affirmation is something that you say to yourself to kind of get your mind right, uh -huh. you know? Because sometimes we can tell ourselves that uh, we're no good at that. Oh. Or, you know what, I had a very, very hard time in school. And you know, sometimes I'd go to school and, and I'd take a test and I'd think, man, I've got, it, I did 100 on that right, test. Right, right, I, right. I knew it was going to be perfect. Right. And I'd get it back, uh -oh. I did not do well. Uh -oh. I did not do well. And it's easy to say, you know, why did I mess up on that? I am no good at tests. No. I'm not good at learning. Oh. All these different things. Huh. Do you ever do that? Yeah, I have. And, and we just can't do that, you know? We have a choice to either be happy or we have a choice to be sad. Right. And so self-talk is when we talk to ourselves and we say, I'm gonna do great at this. Uh -huh. I'm gonna have a great day. Uh -huh. People around me may be negative, but I am choosing to be positive. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And, and you mean even kids can talk to themselves? It's most important to talk to yourself when you're a child. You know why? Why? Because when you're a child, you are setting the roadmap for the rest of your life. And that's what I love about you. You are always so positive. And you know what? what? Every time you have somebody on, their, on your show, uh -huh. you make them feel like the most important person in the world. Oh, shucks. You know that? You know that? <laughs> oh, thank yeah. you. You are a good person, Murph. Oh, thank you so much. But what if you're not good at something? Like you weren't good at math, you said. How do you talk to yourself then? Well, we can do one of two things. You can say to yourself, I am good at math. I'm just a, sometimes a slow learner with it. Uh -huh. you know? Sometimes that's the case. Right. Or you can focus on things that you're good at. I really, I think my strength was people. Uh-huh. You know? I think so too. You're really good at talking to people and bunnies. Thank you. I love people and I especially love bunnies. Oh, thank you. What was your favorite book when you were a kid? Favorite book when I was a kid was a was a book that uh, one of my best friends' mothers gave me, uh -huh. and it was Dr. Seuss' Oh, the Places You'll Go. Oh, I love that book. You know what? You have been an awesome guest. And you know what we say around here? Is it you the bunny? Yeah, you the bunny. You remember you the bunny. Oh, I wouldn't bunny. forget the bunny. that. You the bunny. Well, John, he was such an awesome guest. I, I loved what he said about self-talk. Yes, we both need to practice that. Yeah. You know, Murph, it's important to value our old friends, but also to be willing to meet new friends, just like Justin's doing. Oh, you're right. You know, and I must remember that every bunny and kid has something to contribute, and that I shouldn't judge other rabbits about uh, how they're dressed or how many carrots they have. You're right, Murph. Murph, do you remember those giraffes that we saw at the zoo? Uh, of course 
I remember. Why? Well, even though the patterns of marks on the giraffes look so much alike, they're not. Uh, Each one is completely unique and different from all the others. Whoa! I know, right? And it's also that way with people. Every person is unique and different. Our old friends and the new friends we meet, every one of them is unique. Hmm. I, I guess we have to take time to, to remember and appreciate people. I know, I know. Let's show the kids at home the giraffes. Let's go. Oh, hi everybody. I am so excited because I am at the Nashville Zoo at Grassmere with my friend Miss Kate. Hi Miss Kate. Hi Murph. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm really excited to be here with my friends. Tell us about these fabulous animals. So we have four giraffe here at the zoo and the big one right behind you is named Congo. He no. is our male giraffe. He just turned nine years old. And we have fourth three. Grade. He's in fourth He's grade. He's in fourth grade, yep. Yeah, yeah. Hello, how are you to be? Whoa, you're kind of big. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to make you famous. We have three females, um, if you're able to get a shot of them. So we have a one year old, a three year old, and a nine year old. And the other nine year old female is Congo's girlfriend. Oh. Yep. Wow, that's pretty cool. Well, um, how tall do giraffes get, Miss Kate? Uh, males typically get to about 17 or 18 feet, and Congo is 17 feet. Whoa. Our females usually get to about 14 or 15 feet, and when they are born, they are six feet tall. Wow. Oh, what are you feeding him, Miss Kate? We are feeding him lettuce. These are carrots and lettuce. We feed our giraffe vegetables when we give them treats. Uh, you're not gonna give those, those carrots away, are you? I, I assume <laughs> that you maybe want one. <laughs> Uh-oh, we might have to fight Congo off. How do they eat with those long necks? They are able to stretch their heads all the way up and they actually have an 18 inch tongue, so it's a foot and a half long, well. that they're able to use like we use our fingers. It's called prehensile. So they'll actually grab leaves with their tongues and pull them into their mouths. 18 inch long tongue. Yep. Boy, he could really do something with a lollipop, didn't yes, he? Yes, yeah, he could. Yeah, okay, wow. Well. Well, tell me how they sleep, Miss Kate. So giraffe are very interesting in that they only sleep about 30 minutes to one hour a day. Wow. And they only take about five minute cat naps throughout the day, so it's not even all at once. Wow. And they can sleep standing up, lying down, and with their eyes opened or closed. Is that a baby? The she one? is 16 months old, Ooh. so she is still considered a calf, yes. And are they social animals? They're very social animals. Um, in the wild, they could be in very large herds of over 100. Um, they don't typically form very close relationships with each other, but they're very social in that they like to uh, meet new friends and try different groups out. And they also will hang out with other animals besides giraffes. So you can see them hanging out with maybe zebra and other antelope species. What are their natural predators? Um, if it's a smaller giraffe, it would be like lions or wild dogs, uh, maybe hyenas. Uh -huh. But when they're this big, animals tend to not bother them just because they are so strong. Uh -huh. um, so a, a predator for an adult would be people. Ah, well, how fast can they run? Giraffe can run 35 miles per hour and it's called Ooh. a gallop. That's very fast, isn't it? Are the giraffes scared of people? They are shy animals, uh -huh. so they tend to stay back and watch and maybe see if that person is a threat. Mm -hmm. um, but once they realize that they, there's no harm, they, they tend to be um, a little bit more friendly and curious. What are those things on his head? Those is are... with those? No. no. So that would be nice, though. Those are called ossicones, and they are horns. Ooh. And the males use them to fight. And why are they marked like that? Is that like camouflage? It is, it's for camouflage. So in the wild, if there were a large group of giraffes standing together, it would be really hard for a predator to pick out just one of the animals. Mm. I think they're absolutely wonderful. What's your favorite thing, Miss Kate, about the giraffes? 
the, my favorite thing. Oh my. I love their eyelashes and their oh. sweet eyes. Oh, they have um, beautiful long eyelids. Yes. And I do like how shy they are and it takes cute. time to get to know them. Yeah. Miss Kate, do all the giraffes have their own personality? They do. They are all very different from one another and that's probably one of my favorite things is getting to know each of them individually. We, we feel that way about our friends too, don't yes, we? Yes, we do. So it's important to take the time to get to know them just like we do our friends, right? It's very important. And, and to recognize that we're each special and different. That's very true. Oh, thanks, Miss Kate. Come on out and visit the giraffes at the Nashville Zoo. <laughs> okay, that was way cool, dude. Yeah. Now, how about we do something a little closer to home? Like what? Well, this is brand new. Oh, really? Oh, what is it? Why don't you come see? <laughs> okay, hey, hey, you guys come too. Everybody. Oh, I'm so excited to be out here at Bloomfield Links with my friend, Mr. Tracy. Hi, Mr. Tracy. Hey, Murph. Oh, oh, I'm excited. I've never been here before. Is this a new place? It's brand new. And what, what is this place? Why is there a flag here? Well, this is, uh, is going to be our version for uh, starting golf, beginning golf, uh, whether it be for kids or adults, but uh, mainly geared uh, towards our youth. So we, we use the smaller flags and the bigger holes so that they can uh, enjoy it and have, have a lot of fun. Oh, okay. What, what do you do with the flag when you play golf? Well, the flag is the is the indicator. You put it in the hole. This is, this is on the green, uh -huh. and uh, you start at a tee. You hit your ball, and you try to get it into the hole. Is, uh, few shots as possible and the flag just is an indicator to where the hole is so you know where to aim. So you can see from far, far away, right? Very far away, okay, yes. Okay, cool, cool. And what does what is green mean when you talk about the green? The area that you do your putting. Normally you're hitting shots that go in the air. Uh -huh. Putting is when you roll the ball on the ground. Uh -huh. And this area that you'll see right in here, it's not green right now because it's still cold and the grass hasn't come out yet. But uh -huh. this little area right here is called the putting green, the actually. The putting, putting green. green. The yeah. putting green. Oh, that's fun to say. <laughs> putting green. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh and, and how many putting greens are there out here? Well, we actually have six holes, uh -huh. so there's six putting greens on the golf course. Cool! And, and how, does, how do you get to this place? I came up a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> but, but how do real people get to this place? Right now you park at Old Fort Golf Course, uh -huh. Old Fort Golf Club across, uh, and you get onto the greenway. There's signs there that lead you up a path to the greenway. You walk down the greenway, follow the signs, and then it takes about six or seven minutes to walk here and then you're you're right here. Okay, can, can I give this a shot, Mr. Tracy? Sure you can. Let me get us a club and okay. a ball. Okay. The putter is a flat-faced golf club and it's a little bit shorter and you, all you're actually doing is using it to like a pendulum on a clock to roll a ball. Okay? I see We're like, gonna, a, like a pendulum on a clock. Back, back and, and forth. forth. Back and forth. That's why it's called forth. a putting stroke not okay. actually a hit. Okay. okay? So you're just kind of rolling the ball. Not like baseball. Not like baseball. Nope. Golf is a lot different than baseball in the fact that we have to play our five balls. <laughs> okay? So when your ball gets onto the putting green, you, you get your putter and we're going to roll the ball and we're going to try to get it into the hole as soon as possible. Okie dokie. Now will you help me get it right? Well, sure. Okay. Put your left hand at top. Left hand at it, top. Yep, left hand at the top of the grip. Remember, this area is called the grip. Okay. Thumb right down the middle. Right down. Right hand on the bottom of the grip, right below the left hand. Okay. Just like you were clapping, but separated hands, okay? Okay, okay, okay. So now we're ready to go, and we're just going to move the club back move and forth with our arms, not our whole body, just our arms. And do I wiggle my wrist? No wiggle wrist. Okay, okay. All the arms and club, just like they were one piece. Just like they were one piece. Ooh, ooh. Oh. Can I hit the ball? You can. We're actually, remember, we're not hitting the ball. We're rolling the ball. Rolling the ball because yeah. we're on the green. You're on the green. And the way you think about things, what you say, the words you use are what you're kind of telling your brain to do. So if you say hit, you might just hit it and it'll go anywhere. Oh. But if you think about stroke and roll, it's more like petting an animal. You just oh. stroke and roll. So we all, you can roll it down there nice and soft. Okay? okay. okay. So I'm going to help you the first time. Remember, arms, hands, and club all work together. All one work piece. together. Okay. Ready? Back. Through. Oh, 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 
Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Tracy? Yes, you did. Great job. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm excited. Can I do it again? You can do it again. You want to try it by yourself? Oh, yes, yes, please. All right. Here we go. Uh-oh. Oh, I didn't go far enough. That's okay. That's what learning's about. Okay, here I go. Here I go again. I I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to give up. Okay, here we go. <gasps> oh! <laughs> I uh, did see that. You see? Did, oh, you you stayed that. with it the first couple times. You missed, then you didn't hit it quite far enough, then a little too far, then you adjusted it, and it was perfect. Oh, Great job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. Isn't that fun? Yeah, yeah. Oh, all the kids in Murfreesboro need to come out and check out Bloomfield Links. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. Thank you. That was pretty awesome, Murph. <laughs> Great jumping jackrabbit it sure was. So, what do you want to do now? I'm hungry. You know, Murphy's Grill City Schools does cool stuff too. Really? How does that go together? Well, they have a super cool program for kids called the Junior Chef Program, where kids learn all about foods and, and how to make special treats. Oh, it's amazing. Hey, hey, let's peek in at what they're doing. Good idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome, Murph, to Junior Chef today at Bradley Academy. Today we're going to play a little game with the kids. We're going to teach them about taste buds, how to smell it, how to taste it. And we're going to show them the difference in their taste buds today, show them the bumps on their tongue, and tell them what's sweet, sour, and salty, where that is in your mouth and stuff like that. And have a good day with the kids. All right, put your finger on your tongue. Does everybody feel the little bumps on your tongue? Okay, the bumps on your tongue are your taste buds. Okay. Because one has sprinkles. Okay, everybody taste the one with the sprinkles first. Okay. Sour. Sour. Alright, where's sour at? Where is it? Okay. Okay. Everybody? Okay, what do you think this other jelly, this other one is? Sweet. Let's try the other one. Sweet. 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 That's a fat lady. But what happens, hey, what happens if you get a lemon jelly? You think it's going to be sweet or sour? It's going to be like in between. See right here? It'll be in between because it'll be a sweet sour mix. Okay? Okay, guys, lemon juice. You don't have to drink it. You can put your finger in it and just taste it. And tell me how sour this is. More sour. Huh? Okay. This this right here is pure lemon juice. Yeah. So, if we put a little sugar in that lemon juice, what will we have? Sweet. We'll have lemonade. We add a little water, a little sugar to it. We'll have fresh lemonade, right? And it'll be sweet. It won't be so sour. Okay. 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 Everybody eat it. Tell me what what are we tasting? What do you think the pretzel represents on the chart? Salty. In the middle. Of salt. It's good. It's good. It's salt. There's two salties. You know, John, I'm beginning to see what you mean about being bored. It wasn't the things around me making me bored. It was me. Oh, and, you know, talking to Mr. Justin and, and Mr. Tracy, learning about self-talk and, and seeing our giraffe friends again. Oh, it all made me feel so much better. I'm not bored anymore. I'm glad to hear it, Murph. You know, we found all sorts of fun things to do today in Murfreesboro. Oh, yeah, and you know, we need to thank our special guest, too. We sure do. Special thanks to Jim Bartu and all of his friends at the zoo. Yeah, and our very, very special guest, the one, the only, Justin Holder. Yeah. That's right, and Chef Jack Sawyers Yum. and all the kids that were in the special chef camp. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And of course, oh, Mr. Tracy, play that golf, Wilkins. Yeah, we had a good time out at the Lynx, didn't we? Yeah, Bloomfield Lynx. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, you know, we've had a great show and it's time to say goodbye. You know what I'm going to do now? What are you going to do, Murph? I think I'm going to go uh, empty the dishwasher. No, 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 I'm not going to empty the dishwasher for my mother. I'm going to help her clean out the fridge. <laughs> I bet you will, <laughs> yeah, Murph. all the carrots, the celery, the broccoli, oh, the spinach, the radishes. Mm, mm, uh, uh, and then you need to play with your brothers and sisters to work off all that extra weight. Yeah, right. Okay, okay. Bye-bye, bye-bye. We the money, you the money, you the money, I'm the money, you the money, we the money, we the money, we the money.